what's going on everybody welcome back to my channel you already know it's your girl patrick kiera and in today's video we are back with another episode of black faces creative spaces but in today's episode i actually had the opportunity to do my first interview i interviewed mickey brown who is a model she is signed with new pandemics which is a modeling agency in new york city mickey has shot with refinery 29 teen vogue uk times she has been making her way in the fashion industry and she is a name that you guys need to know and in this interview I basically talked to Mickey about her start in the modeling industry how she's navigated her way through and just her overall thoughts and experiences in the fashion industry before we get into it make sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel and let's get into it today all right cool all right, guys, so I am here today with Mickey Brown. Mickey, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Um, okay, so we're just gonna get started on the interview. I've already given everyone a brief intro of who you are, but if you'd like to kind of tell everyone who you are as well, uh, that would be great. Cool. My name is Nikeela, but I go by Mickey. I'm from Stanford, Connecticut. I'm 25 years old. Um, I'm a model. I'm an artist. And yeah. Just a creative all the way around. Just, just, a, just a all around creative. But right now, I'm heavily pursuing modeling and acting. Okay, so speaking of modeling, since that's like your main focus right now, how did you get into modeling? Is this something that you always wanted to do as a child or is it something that you just kind of came across? It's something that kind of just came across, like I came across. Okay. And 2017 is like when I started modeling. Okay. Um, I would just, like my friends would just take photos of me or they would just want like a picture of my outfit and then, yeah, like, it's so funny because before then I was never really a big selfie person or a big photo person. I used to hate taking photos. And then, like, you know, everyone would go to the, um, like, the, uh, like, the Apple store after school and they would have, you know, I would always be on the sideline. I used to hate taking photos. Oh, um, but then, like, my friend said it using me to, like, test you or take photos of my outfits. And then I just started posting them on Instagram and then started getting like likes and Instagram followers. And then everyone would be like, oh, you should model or hey, can I shoot you? Um, and I got casted a few times on the street. So it, it all like it all kind of just came to me. Yeah. And in January is when I officially got signed with New Pandemics. And um, yeah. Okay, so New Pandemics, that is a modeling agency in New York? Yep, they're based in New York, and they're, like, it's to put a highlight on LGBTQ models, like, okay. to make space for us in the industry. I love that. That's so dope. Um, okay, so I know that you also went to FIT, right? So mm -hmm. can you give us some insight into your experience there? Because I know a lot of my subscribers are very interested in fashion. And they may want to go to fashion school as well. Yeah, so it's funny because like the first couple of years, mm -hmm. I didn't actually go to FIT. I would just have friends there. <laughs> so I got to like feel out the school and I got to like like get insight from all of my friends and all of the different majors they were in. Okay. So when I got there, I already had like a solid group of people. Um, but I studied fashion merchandising there. Okay. And I took like a, a course on fashion merchandising, like a few, a few classes in that course. And then also in AMC, AMC advertising, marketing and communication. Okay. Um, and when I was like 18, I did like a summer program in Parsons as well for fashion design. Okay. And I know those are always like compared to people are always trying to choose between the two. Exactly. I feel like Parsons was definitely more challenging, mm -hmm. but they kind of like make you figure out yourself and what you want to do. And they give you that creative space. Whereas then FIT is more focused on technique 
like you will have the skills to get out like it might be hard to find a job but you will have the skills to get out there and make it work um and the campus it's like a concrete campus so it's like it's not as motivating as maybe like pratt okay like actually being there right um but there's a lot of resources there there's a lot of connects there a lot of teachers have you know been in the industry did what they needed to do and can like help you with those connections um it will challenge you okay. and i think for the most part if you're going to you know up your skill definitely worth it if you're going to kind of figure yourself out as a creative where you want room to kind of play around and you know see see what it is you want to do then i think maybe like some of the other art schools like Pratt or Parsons would be better for you. Okay. And would you say that going to those schools, you've been able to utilize skills and techniques that you've learned from there now and like what you do or what you want to do in the future? I'd say 50-50, yes. Okay. Like, I don't think I truly learned anything at FIT. It just kind of like enhanced some of my like thinking, but I there, there's nothing that I took from there that was like, oh yeah, now I I can definitely make it now. Right. I think my biggest take from there was the people I met there. Yeah. Like some of the people that I met there, I'm still really great friends with, and then some of the people like I'll bump into now, like on like right. on set or something. It's like oh like I remember you from there or you know so. I, I learned more connections from there, but that's because my major was advertising, marketing, and communication. Right. Someone who's doing like menswear or, you know, women's wear, knitwear, or maybe even gra graphic design, you'll learn more skill in those majors. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as far as your modeling, because I know that's your main focus, what would you say is probably the your favorite project that you've worked on or that you've been on set for um i feel like my favorite project hmm. okay it's so funny because both of them are with me being nude <laughs> <laughs> and we love it the freedom. Um, so I shot with one of my friends. Her name is Mace. And she was doing like this nude project. Um, and that was like, so I had, I had done like my first, my first thing is with Ryan McKinley. That was my first time shooting nude. And I was scouted by a oh, member okay. on his team. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was scouted by a member of his team for like during Afropunk. Mm -hmm. And like I've always been self-conscious of my body. So for me to like, I literally had to just gas myself up and was like, listen, listen, girl, just do it. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I think that was like the start of my confidence. Like just being able to just like let go of all you know what someone's gonna say or what they're gonna think um but i never got to see any of those photos so that's just how like ryan usually works he posted me once on his instagram but i never got to like actually see like my body Gotcha. Um, but just being able to work with him was amazing. Like, his team was amazing. The energy in there was amazing. But then my second fave was with Mace. And once again, I just kind of went in there with that, like, just have fun, enjoy it. Like, don't think about, don't think about it too much. Just be, like, try to be present without overthinking. And I actually got to see those photos and that like boosted my confidence even more just to kind of like see myself without anything on like, right. cause you know, like I feel like we use clothes and makeup hair to kind of like give ourselves this image and we find beauty in that image. But to like see myself fully bare was just super beautiful and gave me like a whole new love for myself. 
So definitely Mace and Ryan McKinley. Okay. I love that because I feel like most people from the outside looking in see modeling as this superficial world where you have to be perfect and you have to be a size zero and you have to like eat properly so would you say that your experience as a model has helped you gain confidence and become more confident in yourself definitely but i've never really been in the industry like i just started in january and even then i have such an amazing agent like they don't make me go on a strict diet or be a certain size and they fight for me. And so, but before that, when I was modeling on my own, like still, I had no one telling me, you have to look like this. You have to, you have to like be this size. Of course, like I would get rejected for things or like, you know, I would be on hold for something or like someone would be like, oh, we want to see you in this, but they end up going with someone else. But I was never like exposed to exposed directly to like how it is in the industry when it comes to people being so strict like that which i like i'm super blessed for like everything everything that i've experienced is like i think just like a small portion of what how they actually treat models in the industry okay and Okay, so this is going to be for Black Faces Creative Spaces, if you don't already know. And on my channel, I like to talk about like kind of those adversities as Black people that we face in the fashion industry. So have you Mm -hmm. had any challenges or adversities that you faced as a Black woman in the fashion industry? It could be from modeling, it could be from attending FIT or Parsons. Have you had any of those type of experiences? For sure. (laughs) Uh um like i said because i have an agent i don't like have to deal with that it's like it's in a way it's kind of like sheltering for me because like he'll submit me for something i'll go in the casting but i'm not in the room and i don't like i'm not in the room when they decide and also like i'm represented by somebody so i don't like if i'm if I'm submitted from some for something, I won't know unless I've gotten it or unless I'm on hold for it, you know? So in the in the industry, not so much yet. Or like besides like, you know, some people not really knowing how to like do my hair with my wig. Like I noticed that it's always like I have to I always go to a shoot with options of my hair and both of my wigs like pre done. Cause I know like Half of the time, there's not going to be a black hairdresser there. Right. So there's that. But in general, like, being a dark-skinned woman and then also plus size is always going to be something that people don't see as a struggle, but definitely is. Like, colorism is definitely a thing. Um, but now I feel like the industry is starting to open up and they want like that chocolate girl and they want like the curvy girl. Um, but then even when it comes to that, they want a certain shade and they want a certain type of curve. Right. Which I I think people don't really talk about, but there's like, yeah, like they're accepting plus size girls, but there's a certain type, um, which is like still fucking sucky because it's like. Mm-hmm. Curve doesn't come in one, like, one Coke bottle type of shape. Exactly. And then with that, going into a shoe, like, if you, like, being plus size, sometimes they don't, if you're going in for a casting and they don't know your sizes, they might not have those sizes for you to try on. Mm-hmm. Like, I went, I had a casting for something, and they literally had one one option of one size for me to try on in that cast. I mean, so I guess that is a, that is a, uh, like something I, I have to go through, but I don't, I think I'm desensitized to it because just even like in everyday life, I don't always find my size in everything. But I guess that is something that I go through, but then on like just regular everyday life stuff, like I have people like, I have people come up to me, oh my God, like, I love your hair, is that a wig? Oh my God, your hair is different from the last time. What happened, what changed? I like the other one better. Like, worms for brains. (laughs) 
literally. Um, and I think, I think because, you know, Black women are always, like, there's always that label on top of us of being, like, angry Black women. Right. So, naturally, we try to just kind of be passive-aggressive about things. And... At first, I'm like, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be aggressive. I don't want to be, you know, that angry woman. But if you don't say anything or if you don't put people in their place and they don't learn. Exactly. And I'm like, because I didn't say anything to that guy who was like, oh, what happened to your hair? I like the other hair better. He's going to do that to another black girl. Right. And so I feel like I, I'm trying to find a way to be able to speak up for myself without feeling bad about it and in a way where it's not like I'm yelling. Right. I could definitely relate. <laughs> and that I think that's like something I struggle with being a black woman. Like speaking up for myself but in a way where it's not aggressive and where like I'm still heard and people still understand and perceive what I'm saying. Exactly. And I feel like from like societal standards and societal norms we are kind of conditioned to not speak up because we don't want to be perceived in that way right and then that's that's from being black and then also from just being a woman like women are like taught to be seen not heard yeah i definitely agree okay so i know that your most recent campaign that you worked on or most recent project that you talked about on your instagram was your v files campaign so can mm-hmm. you kind of tell us a little bit about that yeah so the v files campaign is called i count you know be heard make noise and that's to kind of bring some recognition to like the senses you like this i feel like this year although we have horrible options but this year i think really counts in terms of voting you know it's like (sighs) i'm just gonna leave it there right (laughs) but this year is super important and i think it's like 54 percent of black people in brooklyn like are not counted in the census and it's hard for, you know, like, our officials to kind of represent us if they don't know that we count. So, like, in terms of funding, like, the, the city is only going to get this, this amount because only this many people are accounted for. So that's what, like, that was geared toward. Okay. And I feel like if you don't live in, like, an electoral state, like, if you do live in a electoral state, it counts even more to vote because like these are like our local government, I think that's where a change is gonna happen. Like even if Trump wants to pass a dumbass law, like our like it won't it won't get passed if our governor or mayor doesn't approve of it. So I feel like black people need to get more involved into their local government and like these like these people don't care about us. They they're not representing us. So we need to represent ourselves. Like teach ourselves. Be hit when there's when they're trying to pass a new law. We need to be there. We need to be heard. Make noise. Like we count. And that's what that was about. Okay. And I'm like really happy I got to be a part of that and like have my voice be heard with that. And yeah, I feel like with what you were saying with everything that's been happening this year, it's like so important for not even only the fashion industry, but for all industries to kind of bring that to our attention. Like, yeah, you said there's 54% of Black people who live in Don't, um, don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so. a, a large percentage yeah. of Black people who are not accounted for. And that says a lot because they're looking at these numbers and trying to figure things out. But it's like, you don't even know we exist. Right. And a lot of the police officers, like, they aren't, they aren't even from, like, they're, they don't live where they're working. So when we pay taxes, like, it's going to people who don't even live there. Exactly. You know? And I just found that out. And I feel like we just need to be more, more hip and more aware. And I think 
we could, I know we could definitely make change with that. Like, if we're just all, like, we all have knowledge of what's going on, then we can stop stuff, oppose things, like, but yeah. And it's also important for our generation to kind of start that because I feel like our parents were still in that era of like the civil rights movement. Like they were just like barely grazing that line. Mm -hmm. So everything was still new. But now that we have lived past all that and we're in 2020 where we have Trump for president and everything, we have to make sure that we educate ourselves and seek the resources to know how to vote and what government officials that we have out there so that we can control everything that's going on, especially for our kids and future generations. Like we are the start for the change. I agree a thousand percent. Okay, yes. yeah. So, okay, tell us what we can expect to see from you in the future. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I have a few, I have a few things that I've worked on, but I don't know if I can talk about it. Okay. But just definitely more like, you're going to be seeing my face a lot more, Mm -hmm. um, more modeling, more acting. Um, and like, I still am a, like pursuing tattooing. That's something that like, I've been learning as well. And like, I want to, I want that to kind of be like my little side thing um so like modeling acting tattooing um and more of my voice i feel like i have a lot to say and a lot to share and on instagram like i just kind of show my face but i want my voice to be heard more like i'm fighting for myself and a lot of other people and yeah you're like representing for other people. <laughs> yeah. And I like, I'm too quiet. Like I, I have a lot, I have a lot to say. You have so. a lot to say, so you might as well just speak your mind. <laughs> right. You so, heard yeah. that noise. <laughs> so more modeling, acting, tattooing, and definitely hearing my voice more. Okay. And the last thing that I'm going to ask you is to pull out your favorite item in your closet right now. Okay, so I already have it ready. Okay, good. You came prepared. So this is um I bought like three of these shirts. Okay. Um this is a like a t-shirt version of the suits that Andre 3000 had that he would wear when he was on tour. Um and when the quarantine was going on and the protesting was going on, I think for like a day or maybe like two days, um, he had them on sale. Okay. Um, and all of the proceeds went to Black Lives Matter. Um, and these like these these jumpsuits are iconic. Like they all say like a bunch of like a bunch of like crazy things. So this one says. Across cultures, black people suffer most. Why? And another one that I have, I believe it's, it says, um, quit playing and hand over the cure. Mm. And <laughs> I, I just love those jumpsuits. I was so happy when he came out with like a t-shirt version of those. This is like something I will never, ever, 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 ever get rid of. Right. Ever. You it's like my favorite favorite item right now. Coming from an icon. <laughs> right. And it it took like six, I think it took like eight weeks for me to get it. Ooh. <laughs> ah. Patience. Patience. Yeah, but that's my favorite item right now. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this interview today. You are the first person I've interviewed for Blackface Creative Spaces. So thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. To see what you do in the future. And everyone, I will make sure to leave Mickey's Instagram down below and all her social media handles so you guys can follow her. And yes, I'll see you later. Later.